some, some of my kids, kids and grandkids, grandkids have put uh, all of our kids, one of those little symbols, symbols or whatever they are, I don't know what they're called, but they, they got them on there for all five of our kids and all 22 of our grandkids and all six of our great grandkids. And the woman looked at me and said, is that real? And I said, yes, ma'am, it's, it's real. And uh, they're a blessing. I was just looking here as the kids were saying, that's at least one child out of uh, my four oldest children, Michael's and Jenna's and David's and Bethany's uh, children. Uh, none of Joy's children was there in that. But Lord willing, this year they will be here. Uh, possibly by uh, May, somewhere through there. Maybe a little bit before, but we're not sure. But maybe they will be coming in. Been six years since they've been here. And uh, for a grandpa and a papa and a mama, that's a long time. Uh, I guarantee you. And uh, we're looking forward to it. But we've been blessed. Uh, we've been blessed in the year of 2000 and 21 and uh, praying for the year of 2000 and 22. And here I'm talking about us, all of us. I want to ask you a couple of questions tonight. Is anybody here tonight that is one person? Anybody that is one person? You say, say preacher, preacher, we're not Siamese twins, you know. Uh, I don't see anyone with two heads or anything like that. And by the way, you know, we have been blessed. Uh, there have been a number of folks uh, that have been born as the Siamese uh, twins and all that they go through. And again, thank the Lord for the medical field. The Lord gives uh, all of this knowledge and all, but where they can separate uh, the children like that. Uh, but we're one person. And no one here is nobody. Everybody here is somebody. Everyone here is one person. Uh, this evening, my message is simply entitled, One Person, One Person Can Make a Difference. <laughs> one Person Can Make a Difference. You and I that are in this world, we can make a difference every day. We can make a difference uh, every day of the year. And no matter who you are, no matter where you came from, no matter what talents you do have or you don't have, no matter the skills you have or the skills that you don't have. No matter who we are, you can make a difference. You can make a difference in your family. You can make a difference in your church. You can make a difference in the lives of people around you. In the Bible there is the testimony of a man who made a great, great difference in the lives of people, people around him, people uh, that he knew and people that he really didn't know. And this man made a difference in your life. You and I, one man made a difference. Another man made a difference that I'll just speak of and run. That was a man by the name of Adam. We know that through Adam, where he sinned, that sin broke fellowship with God. 
And from one man, sin passed down upon all men by that one man and through that one man, the seven billion people that are living today and the billions of people that have lived in the past, that man made a difference in every life. Tonight, I'm in the book of Genesis and we're in chapter six and we find here a man by the name of Noah. And Noah, one man, made a difference in the life of so many people. We find in Genesis chapter 6, look with me, verse number 5, and, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, <clears throat> both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But look in verse number eight. <clears throat> it says, but Noah, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God created everything perfect as God always does. But sin from there in the garden where Adam willingly took and ate of the fruit of the tree that his wife had given him. That broke the fellowship with God. And once that fellowship was broken, it was sin. And the world became, began to get worse and worse. We find soon after this, there was murder. We find the boys in the family, one killing another. We find that sin abounded. And when you come to chapter 6, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great, the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Oh, how evil, how sinful man was. But in verse 8, but Noah, <laughs> but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Because of the sinfulness of man, God was looking for someone that he could use to make a difference. That he could make a difference. Now, he couldn't make a difference by himself, but God was looking for one who was willing to be used and make a difference. And that one person that God found, that one person was that man named Noah who found favor with the Lord. While all the people around Noah, they were running from God. They were running from the cause of God. But Noah, Noah was ready and Noah was willing to hear God's voice and to not only hear God's voice, but to obey God's voice. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 7, by faith Noah, being warned of God 
of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness which is by faith. We find one man who God saw that was willing to be used to build the difference. And that one man was Noah. You all know about Noah? The story is about Noah and the ark. Well, you know I won't spend time there. Tonight I want to say to you that God is not calling me and he's not calling you to be a Noah. God's not calling us. He's not calling any of us to build an ark. Now, if I was to build an ark, it'd probably look worse than one Noah built. I mean, uh, it may not be the best, but Noah, but God is not calling us to build an ark. God is not really calling us to repopulate the earth, but God is calling you and I to make a difference in our world. He is calling us to make a difference just as Noah did. And we can make a difference in our families. We can make a difference in our church. We can make a difference in this world just like Noah did in his day, when we, like Noah, learn to hear the voice of God. When we hear that voice of God. Many years ago, before refrigerators come along, before the ice boxes in the homes and in the houses, People used to take in the winter time and they would go out into the rivers when they would freeze over, the lakes when they would freeze over, and they would cut the big chunks of ice out. Some of you may, well, I don't know if you remember or not, because I can't say that I really do. But I have seen and been told by my father-in-law about when the Ohio River would freeze over. I mean, solid, where they drive the cars, the old, the old Model T's and all, where they would drive them across the river. These people used to go out where this water was frozen in the ice, and they would cut big, big chunks of ice out as big as they could lift out, as big as they could haul out. And they would take this ice and they would haul it to their homes where they had dug out a place, a large place, and they would put sawdust down. And then on top of that sawdust, they'd lay layers of ice. On top of the first layer of ice, they would then put more sawdust and then more ice and so forth. Uh, and that ice uh, in the ground and in the sawdust and all, it could last up until the middle of July or maybe the first of August before it would melt. That was the way they used for cooling and all. But one day in doing so, uh, one of the men uh, discovered that he had lost his watch and he hunted all over that ice house. The men that was working with him, they all looked for just that little watch. Now, used to be the watches weren't hardly as quiet as they are now, but uh, they would uh, go. But anyway, uh, they could not find that watch at all. They quit for lunch and when they had quit for lunch, there was a little boy that had been there listening to the people talk. They all got out and went to eat. This little boy went in 
into the ice house there where they put the ice and the sawdust and all. He went in and he closed the door. And then just a little while, this little fellow came out carrying the watch. They asked that little boy, said, how? How did you find that watch? The little boy said, I went in, I closed the doors where there was no sound. He said, I laid down on that sawdust. And there in the quietness, I put my ear down to the sawdust. And he said, it wasn't but a little while, a minute or so, that I could hear the voice of that watch. And he said, I simply went where the voice, where I heard the sound of that watch. 2022, I say to you, we've got a God that still speak. We see where he spoke to Noah. But you know, God is speaking today. The problem we have, most of us don't get down and close the doors. And we don't get down and put our ears to the ground where we can hear the voice of God talking to us. 2022. Our God's the same as the God of Noah. My friends, as we come into this year, we need to get quiet. We need to listen for God. Now, God doesn't always speak the way he did to Noah. By the way, God won't speak to you and I the same way. God don't usually do it. God don't have no certain way. But in 1 Kings 19, 11, and he said, Go forth and stand up on the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Verse 12, after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. When Elijah when Elijah needed to hear a word from God, we find that the Lord instructed him to go stand on the mountain, as we just read here, and that violent whirlwind passed by. But the Lord wasn't in that. The Lord wasn't in the earthquake. The Lord wasn't in the fires. But the Lord was in speaking through that small still voice. And God spoke to Elijah, not in the loudness, but in that still, small voice. You know, that's the way God still speaks today. If we want to hear God's voice, if we want to hear God, we're going to have to slow down enough to hear what he's calling us to do. And if we'll slow down, and if we will listen to the voice of God, we will hear from God, and we'll learn how to make a difference in our world. Noah did made a difference in the world. Second thing, 
We can make a difference when we live for God's purpose. When we live for God's purpose, in my pocket here tonight, I've got two ink pens. One of them is a hundred dollar ink pen. The other is a quarter ink pen. They both, well, they don't look exactly the same. But I ask you, what's the purpose of the ink pen? What's the purpose of it? Well, you say, well, it's to write, to use, to record, to write. And that's true. But if it can't write, it's not worth anything. The hundred dollar pen, well, that's a lot better to look. It's got a, it's got a better feel than the quarter ink pen. But I take this hundred dollar ink pen and I start writing on paper. And all of a sudden, nothing's there. What good is that ink pen? I take the quarter pen, I begin to write. Man, I see what I'm writing. The quarter ink pen. The quarter ink pen is doing what it was made the purpose of. The $100 pen is worth nothing. The quarter one. The quarter one. Friend, what's our purpose? You see, a pen that won't serve its purpose is not worth anything. What is our purpose? In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And after God had given Noah the instructions on how to build the ark and how the ark was to be built, and then God instructed Noah in who to bring on to the ark, what animals to bring on the ark. God gave Noah all of these instructions. Genesis chapter 6 verse 22 says this, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. So he did. You see, Noah did what the Lord commanded him to do. When he came, he had built the ark. People laughed at him. 120 years building an ark. But he didn't have no sawmills to cut the wood out. No chainsaws to cut the wood down. Didn't have any of the power uh, nail drivers. Didn't have any, any, any tools that we know of except the handmade tools. But it said that Noah did all according to what the Lord commanded him to do. And then after the ark was built, and then God told Noah to come into the ark and the animals and all. And the Bible says that there went in two and two into Noah, into the ark, the male and the female, 
as God had commanded Noah. Noah understood how to follow both God's general purpose and the specific purpose that God had for Noah. You see, the general purpose for Noah and for you and I, for each one of us, that has ever lived, our purpose is to please God. To please God. Philippians 2.12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. <coughs> Our general purpose, my friend, is to live in obedience to God. Our general purpose in life is to please God, to please our God. But then we find there is a not only a general purpose, there is a specific purpose. And God's specific purpose for Noah. You see, it was for Noah to build an ark. And he did. And it was to load it up with his family. And thank God he did. And it was to load up the animals. You see, God had a reason. So that when the flood was over, they could repopulate the earth. God had a general purpose for no one, for all of us, to please God, to obey God. And he had a specific purpose for Noah, and he does for each one of us. Now, the specific or, uh, purpose that God had for Noah has never been for anyone else in time of history. You see, God never told anyone else to build an ark. Never told anyone else to bring all the animals in. Never told anyone else to repopulate the earth. That was the specific purpose that God had for Noah. But God has a specific purpose for each and every one of us. You say, preacher, how can we tell what that is? Number one, listen to God's voice. Listen to God's voice. My friend, you're not, you're not going to see God, hear God speaking in an audible voice. Someone tells you they heard God call their name out and speak to them. They're going against this book. But God speaks through his word. That still, small voice. As you take time to read God's word. As you take time to pray. As you take time to obey. As you listen, in that <clears throat> time of stillness, God will speak in a small voice. A little boy got in there and laid his head down on the dust, and he could hear it. My friend, if you and I come before God, and lay ourselves down before him, we can hear God speak. Too many times we're waiting for that great sound to come across the skies. Now, one of these days it won't be a great sound. That's going to be the going home time. But my friend, today, we need to listen to God, God's voice. Number two, we need to discover what God has given us and used for him. For Noah, it was to build the ark. 
And Noah did the best he could. People made fun of him, laughed at him, called him all kinds of names. A lot of things went on. But you know what? Noah didn't let it bother him. Now, I'm sure it hurt him. But Noah didn't let it bother him. He just kept on doing what God told him to do. Finally, he was called all kind of, kind of names, old man. He's getting old now. After all, he's been building that ark for 120 years. They laughed at him. But my friend, all of a sudden, the rains came. <laughs> Why did God want the ark built? That he might take his over. The ark had a purpose. Noah gave what he had to God, and God used him for that purpose. I say to you today, friend, Christian, God has given you things, gifts to use for him that he didn't give to that one sitting beside him. When we stand before God, I don't have to answer for what he gave you. You don't have to answer for what he gave me. I have to answer. And Noah may not have had the best of all, but he realized what he had, and he obeyed God. If you obey God, if you will obey God, what he has given you will allow you to do what he wants you to do. God has given you what you need to do what he wants you to do. You say, well, he didn't give me uh, <coughs> this or this or this that I could do these things. No, you see, that's where we're wanting our will. God says, I gave you what you need. And you just take what I give you. You obey me. And it'll be all right. The third thing was focusing. We need to focus on caring and helping the people around us. Child of God, God has called each one of us to care for people, to look after those. <coughs> he has called us to look after our own family. God gave you children. He wants you taken care of. He said, first, I wish you would have given me better ones. Well, I think we've all been there a time or two, okay? But they're ours. And God says, you take care of them. I don't, I don't know how many of Noah's boys, I don't, I don't know what they was all like. But in they, they weren't all the same, I know that. But I thank God for Noah. There wasn't anyone else that got on the boat except Noah's family. Now you can say what you want about Noah, but you've got to give him credit. He was real. You say, how do you know? Because his kids know. His children know. They did not argue with what Daddy was doing. They helped him. And my friend, when the storms came, when the floods came, when they went into the ark, the animals and them, we find there's Noah, his wife, sons, and wives. That was a man that cared for his family. A 
And because he listened to God, he obeyed God, God blessed him. My friend, we're about one person. One person. We need to listen to God. Preacher, I just don't know how to do it all. No one does. But I'll tell you, if we can only get down, put our ears to the ground and listen for God. And God will speak. And then we will obey. And then third, we need to love God and worship Him. Genesis 8, 25, Have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Child of God, we're not to be seeking what we want. We're to be seeking the things of Christ. No building an order in worship of God. He had a place he got along with God and worshiped his God. The God who had chosen him. The God who had chosen Noah out of all the people that was in the world in that day. Think about that. The God who instructed Noah on every detail as far as the ark what he wanted him to do. The God who had proven his love to Noah and to his family. The God who had protected them. And probably at least one of, if not the most scariest experience that anyone has ever had. Can you remember getting on the boat as his children did and his family? You could hear on the outside of the ark. You can hear those people who made fun of them. You can hear those who had denied that God had told him what to do. But the storms came. And the Bible says that God closed the door. It wasn't Noah. It was God. Then you can hear those on the outside. Noah! Open the door! Can you hear all around the boat? Noah! Open the door! Noah! But Noah couldn't open the door. God's the one that shut it. Could you see the boat as the ark as it began to rise? Can you feel it? Shift. Sharon just had the privilege a few weeks ago of going on a cruise. She came, came back, back and asked her how it was. She, she said it was good, <laughs> but she, she said, said it was rough. It was rough, she could feel it. Can you imagine what it would have been like for them? <laughs> Noah was glad that he listened to God. He was glad that he obeyed God. He was glad that he preached what God told him to preach. He was glad that some people listened. And I think he was especially glad when his own family listened. 
2022. You and I can be that person. I don't think God's ever going to call us to build an ark. I've said a few rains, I thought we needed to win. But God's not going to do that. But there's some storms that we're going to be called to go through. And my friend, we need God. If we want to make a difference, if we want to see a difference in our church, then we're going to have to listen to God. If we want a difference in our families, we're going to have to listen to God. You say, preacher, but it's hard. You think it wasn't hard for Noah? You think that was easy? You know, I know what hardness is compared to what they went through. But I'll tell you what, when he made the decisions to follow God, when he said yes to the Lord, that decision to follow the Lord, to be faithful to him, it's kind of hard. But don't, don't always look today. It's 120 years later. It's 120 years later. And then in the midst, can you imagine the, the animals for 120 years? If you have ever been around the barn, you know, got an idea what it's going to be like. They didn't have a McDonald's to go through or anything else. But my friend Noah looked. There's his family. I imagine Noah said, Lord, thank you for your blessings. They could have said, it's been a long journey. Oh, it's been a long journey. But it's been worth it all. Child of God, you can make a difference in 2022. If you will, you can make a difference in your family, in the church, with the people around you. You can make a difference at work. If you listen to God, obey God, and then worship God. God. You, you see, you, I, and you, we can't make a difference in ourselves. But if we yield to God, God can use us and will use us to accomplish what He wants in our life. Be that one person. Be that one. Daddy, Daddy mommy, mommy, be that, that one in your family. Be that, that one at work. Be that, that one here. And I'll tell you, you'll make a difference. I look back in my life, I see many places where one person made a difference. If you look back, you can see where one person has made a difference. 2022, let's don't condemn, let's don't talk, talk about how bad other folks are, and I know it's that way, but it was that way in Noah's day. But Noah did what God wanted him to do. That's our part, is do what God wants us to do. If you're unsaved, God wants you saved. Would you receive him? Would you receive him? Believe on the Lord, his finished works, and the Lord will save you and give you a home in heaven. Child of God, 
he didn't save us to improve this world by our looks. <laughs> he called us to simply obey him. Be obedient to him. Tonight when you pray and read your Bible, just listen. Just listen to God. You say, preacher, God never talks to me. Now, as I said, he's not going to talk in an audible voice. He's going to talk in that still, small voice. He got something he wants you to do. Will we each one be that one who would do what God wants me to do and you to do that he can work through us? For folks, it's not long till the Lord's coming back. It's not long until Jesus will be here. Let's work for the night cometh when man will work no longer. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed as the pianist comes. Are you going to be that one person? Are you going to make a difference in your family? You say, preach, I can't do it. I'm the only one. No one else will pay any attention. I don't really see where even Noah's wife did. I'm not saying she didn't, but I don't know. But Noah did what God wanted him to do. And the others came along. Will you be that one? Will you live for your Lord? Will you walk with him, talk with him, witness for him? You can make a difference in your family. You say, preacher, I don't, I don't know. Remember, if you don't make that decision today, don't expect to see a good harvest tomorrow. Whatever the need, will you come? As we're standing, the pianist is playing. <laughs> God during the week. 
It's good to have Austin and Janae here today. Appreciate and pray for them. They'll be heading out, I believe, in the morning. And so pray for them, if you will, and for others. We've still got others that are traveling. So keep them in your prayers. And let's each one be what God wants us to be. There are snacks back here tonight, and uh, each of you are welcome to them. Uh, just eat the snack and throw the paper in the trash, okay? Instead of somewhere else, uh, where someone else has to pick it up. We love you. God bless you. Awesome dismisses and prayers.